the numbers around the deficit seem to be like a very wide range when you look at it from from I think both believe a 5.6 percent deficit on 2024 we're trying to shoot for I think uh, Bruno Le Maire at one point promised something close to five percent we're not getting there anytime soon no matter who you ask the IMF the French government themselves what do we need to see for that budget to be more digestible for the EU so first of all um, as you said earlier they're going to have barely two weeks to come up with um, measures and the issue is that, um, you know, fiscal um, policies and, 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 um, and decisions have clearly not been at the heart of President Macron's um, consultations in the recent past. Um, so the government is really going to have to work under huge time pressure. Um, and we know because um, of Michel Barnier being from um, the... Um, um, Republican Party that they are in theory um, going to um, avoid increasing revenue through increasing taxes but we don't know that for sure and it's at this point of time very difficult to say what sort of measures they are going to, um, to come up with but one thing is sure is that it's the absolute priority for this government and they have very little time to implement. So what it means is that he's going to be able to get anything done, he's going to have to at the bare minimum get um, the abstention from some of the non-affiliated um, deputies or LIOT, for example, yeah. uh, if not the active support from some of the extreme right um, deputies uh, in, in, in Parliament. Otherwise, he's going to have to use the 49.3 over and over again, and then he risks a vote of no confidence, and then, you know, um, nothing is going to get done, really. So it, it all seems like a very uh, scary and a very kind of uh, frustrating and intense situation that doesn't necessarily yield uh, positive results given, given the time crunch. But on the positive side, if I may, may inject some, some uh, happiness here, is that Michel Barnier is a, uh, a skilled diplomat. He is a skilled negotiator. So I think the logic from some has been that he can actually manage the, uh, the division that you're seeing in Parliament. The other side of it is that in, from the EU side, there may actually be concessions to the French government if this deficit doesn't quite match their, their standards. Does that change your view on, on France and the investability of France, given the cushion that they may get from the EU and given the global confidence that perhaps is growing in, in this uh, pick? That would certainly be helpful. And when you look at how the markets have reacted so far, um, and French equities, for example, you see that the French stocks that were purely domestic ones have actually already recovered from the time, from the losses from the, uh, the snap election time. And we have to remember that 85% of the MSCI France and the CAC um, is actually, um, you know, driven by stocks that are, you know, global stocks and, and have a global exposure. Um, so I think that's, you know, their, their volatility and the way they behave is actually quite um, independent from, um, from French politics. Um, we, our position at the moment is that we've taken profits from um, European equities and, and we're neutral. Uh, we're more interested in emerging markets um, in, in the equity space, but also in the credit space. And that's really because of, um, you know, the recent announcement of the easing policy by the Fed. Um, and we believe that it will, you know, help uh, get flows into emerging markets who have actually weathered the inflation crisis pretty well. Mm. Um, so we're quite excited about, you know, that part and that um, region, if, if, yes. if I may, so of equities. So your, in Europe. so your interest is elsewhere. And is that because you think that there are risks that we just do all this again in a year? We go into further parliamentary elections in a year or so, Marie. Is that, is that one of the reasons why you look elsewhere? Because we could see volatility or even negativity attached to politics in Europe. It's, it's one of the reasons, definitely. And if uh, we go from, you know, vote of no confidence that the government doesn't survive, then, you know, it's very likely that it will happen. But I think the other argument is independent of this, and it's really linked to the worries around um, European growth. And, and more generally, when you look at growth in developed markets, you know, recent year and then expected for the years to come, it's more around, you know, 1.6, uh, 1.8%, whether, you know, you look at, you know, emerging mm -hmm. markets, you're mm -hmm. around 4%. So the risk of recession is also lower in emerging markets than developed markets at the moment.